Right, okay, so let's go through the second specimen paper. Uh, this one is synthesis and allergical techniques. Okay, so here we go. Uh, first of all, nice and easy one. This is obviously an ester. Um, what's the name going to be? Well, this is a propyl group. You've got four carbons here. So it's pupa, propyl butanoate. Uh, so propyl butanoate is going to be B. Right, so nice uh, uh, experimental procedure uh, being shown here. Um, why do we reflux? Well, we reflux to prevent any substances ex escaping, so that is, of course, B as well. How many, uh, next one, how many stereoisomers, is isomers, isomers are there likely, are there to be of this molecule here? Well, if you check it out, you have got uh, EZ isomerism around that. That carbon there is the pyrocenter. So you can't get any EZ isomers in there because you've got two H's on them in there. So you get two there and two there, so the answer is four. So it is B again. Right, okay, so I've got a functional group um, and it was identified by carrying out the two tests. Heated by acidified dichromate, orange to green. So that could be um, an alcohol. What are these? These are all, these are either alcohol, that's an alcohol, that's an alcohol, that's a ketone, um, and that's an aldehyde. If it, uh, if it forms a yellow orange precipitate, then it's either going to be a ketone or it's going to be a aldehyde. But because it um, reacts with acidified dichromate, it must be an aldehyde because aldehydes can be oxidized to carboxylic acid. So the answer to that one is D. Um, okay. okay, so this one is a bit tricky. Uh, so, you know, if you're competent with moles, do it. If not, then I probably have a guess and move on because you can get your marks somewhere else. Okay, so because they're all gases and they're all measured a um, room temperature and pressure, we can use the equation that moles for gas is um, the volume divided by 24,000 in centimeters cubed. Okay, so 40, sorry, 40 divided by um, 24,000 is going to be 0 0.0017. 20, uh, 240 divided by 24,000 is uh, 0 0.01. And 160 divided by 24,000 is 0 0.0067. If you do that, um, then uh, you divide by the smallest one. Um, the smallest one is going to be this one, isn't it? So you divide by that, that becomes one, that will uh, become six, and that becomes four. Okay, so you know you've got a hydrocarbon, C-N-H-Y, um, you know that you, oh whoops, sorry. Um, you know you've got, you are adding to that. For every one mole of that, you are adding to it six moles of oxygen, like so. You are making four moles of C, oh, CO2. And water, you don't know, but the number of moles of water will be this number divided by two. Okay, so N must equal four, because whatever that number there is must be the same as that. So N is equal to four. What is um, Y gonna be? Well, if you have a look at that, I've got 12 oxygens there. I have got eight oxygens there, which means that Y so that means that this, I must have in total four oxygens coming from this expression here. So Y must equal eight. And therefore the answer is A. A little bit tricky that one. Okay, so one on uh, intermolecular forces now. Why is the boiling point of butane one of higher than two methyl propane two of? Okay, so, um, it's to do with the shape of the molecule. Butan 1 ol is a, a linear molecule, whereas 2-methyl propan 2 ol 
is more of a spherical molecule when you draw them out. Um, they both have hydrogen bonding, but that'd be the same for both, so we're not going to get into that. So, butane one hole has stronger induced dipole dipole interaction, so it's more electrons. No, they've both got the same electrons there, isolated from each other. Um, butane one hole has stronger induced dipole dipole interaction because it is a straight has a straight interaction. Yes, it is in fact six b. Um, they both form hydrogen bonds, so that's not right. Butane one is more stable. It's primary carbon. Doesn't doesn't I don't know. This is just talking about boiling point. Okay, so the answer, of course, is 6b. Okay, so hydrogen bromide reacts with 3 methyl butane. Now, okay, so we're somewhere around there. I haven't put the hydrogens on. You know, this is more persuasive, you've got to be quick. Um, so you draw your basic structure out. What is the structure of the intermediate forms? Well, remember, this hydrogen will add to the uh, carbon that already has hydrogen, the more hydrogens on. That's got two hydrogens, that's only got one. So the electrons are going to come out there and that's going to break. So the positive charge will end up on that carbon and therefore the answer is going to be B. Uh, so some organic chemistry again now. Two chemical tests are added to an aqueous solution of an aromatic organic compound. So if it's an aromatic, it's got to have at least six carbons on. The results of the test are shown below. Bromine is decolorized. If it's bromine is decolorized, then it looks like it could be a phenol. Um, but it effervesces with sodium carbonate. A phenol will not effervesce with sodium carbonate. Only a carboxylic acid will. Uh, therefore, it must have both a phenol group and it must have a carboxylic acid group. So because it's got a carboxylic acid group, it must have at least that going on and therefore it must have at least seven carbons in it. Okay, okay so for this one it helps probably to draw out nitrobenzene and phenylamine. Nitrobenzene is electron withdrawing from the benzene group. So that will direct groups to the 3, 5 position. Um, phenylamine, um, the amine group, is an electron donating, so it directs groups to the 2, 4, 6 position. So what is the product of nitrobenzene when I react it with um, bromine? Um, it's not going to be 2-bromobenzene, is it? Uh, it's going to be 3. So it's either that one or that one. Okay, but when I look at this one, it's going to either be 2, 4, 6. So it's going to be that one. So the answer is C for 9. Uh, right, so which alcohol are prepared to make uh, this compound? I've drawn him out. You can see it's an ester, which is made by carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So that's the bond that I make. So this is the alcohol that I'd be producing. So if you stick an OH on the end here, then you can see it's going to be propantuol. So the answer to 10 is B. Okay, so for the next one is, do you know your mechanisms? Well, if I'm reacting a uh, cyanide ion with halogenol alkanes, uh, is of course nucleophilic substitution um, and if I react it with a carbon atom then it's nu nucleophilic addition so the answer to 11 is D. Okay for this one you could waste quite a lot of time counting up your carbons, hydrogens and so on so let's see if there's a, uh, an easy one. Does it react with base form um, salts? Uh, yes it will because phenol is of course weakly acidic it has a keto keto functional group. No, it doesn't. This is a phenol group. This is an amide group, and the one that isn't true is C. So the answer to twelve is C. Uh, right. Okay. This is quite an interesting one. So um, I take step one, and I I'm going to react this molecule with acidified aqueous dichromate six ions. What will happen? Well, absolutely nothing. Um, I've got a ketone group here. You know that ketones are not oxidized, so the molecule is not affected by that at all. 
So the smell of peppermint will remain. So I'm either looking at A or C. I then add it to sodium borohydride, um, in which case the keto group will be reduced to a secondary alcohol. So I will lose the smell. So therefore, the answer to 13 is A. Okay, for this next one, um, I'm going to disagree with the mark scheme. Um, and I'll explain why. So which of the following supports the delocalized model for benzene rather than the catalyst model? Benzene is less reactive than the cyclohexene. So yes, that's right. Um, that does support the delocalized model for benzene. A benzene molecule has a planar hexagonal structure, which it does. If you look at the Keckley model, um, you would expect it to not really be planar because your double bonds are going to be shorter than your single bonds, so it would be a very distorted uh, uh, molecule. So I think that, that the entropy change of hydrogenation of benzene is more exothermic than it gives you. It's actually less exothermic than it gives you, so that one's not right. So I'm going to say the answer to 14 is B. And then finally, for multiple choice, we've got this uh, molecule of Z shown below. Which of the following statements are true? So the carbon-13 in the marsh shows four peaks. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's right. Proton shows five peaks. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's true. The proton MR in D2O shows three peaks. That's correct because in D2O that one would disappear and that one would disappear, so that would be three peaks. So therefore, all three statements are correct and the answer is 